Right, it's Sunday, I'm between church services, so we'll see if we can spend 20 minutes on this. So, without showing the gentleman's name, uh, da -da -da, L21 eBay Falcon. If you haven't seen the Falcon before, it's the same as the Compact 40, which is the same as the Binaturn Beam Breaker, which is the same as the Merit something or other. So there's four of them which appear. And we do have a circuit diagram. I'll do one of our photos, so I don't think we've done that before. So, transmission received, transmission only test over short distance, history unknown. Uh, is there an extra ceramic capacitor on the back? So I'll look into one of our others. We've got one which Alan sent us a few months ago, which I've not been able to get anywhere with. It's got quite a complex face like loop problem. Um, so we'll be able to look at that, hopefully without undoing one of our finish sets. So I like these. They do 4 watts. They work nicely. And if you have an electron microscope, you can look at the meter as well. So I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll open it up first. And they're not the usual screws. These are not M3s, they're M2.5s, if I remember rightly. Good. And it looks like he's replaced them, which is really nice. So this and the beam breaker were first, followed by the Merit, and then it seems that what was left was ended up as the Compact 40. And the Compact 40 was dead cheap. It was at that time um, when people were clearing stuff, and so you know they were like £25, but these weren't £25. These were like £59. I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll take both lids off because he was talking about these capacitors. Well, we thought they were really tiny sets at the time, but they're probably even a fraction bigger than the Maxcom 20E. I don't know about that one. That this board needs cleaning. Uh, that's that one. Hello, that one looks right. Not sure about that. Not sure why there's a diode there. That looks right. Anyway, we'll compare. He's done a nice job with the lids. We'll, we'll leave that one on, so we don't have a stray capacitance when tuning. Just pop this off. These filters are norm I think that there's the core missing there. These filters are normally hanging out of the top and I suspect that the filter was designed for CPT or FCC CB radios so for it to tune onto UK it's hanging out of the top and that is normal. Why is the capacitor missing there? There is a I'm sure there's a capacitor supposed to be there. Right, straight away we, before we power this up, because that will affect performance. I think that's the big smoothing capacitor which is missing. Uh, absolutely sure. See if we can find the one Allen centers. So here's the one that Alan sent us. And the capacitor is missing on the one from Alan. Are all the ceramics missing from this? All the cores, I mean. And numpty's put them right to the bottom. Anyway, uh, let's look at the bottom. This is why we have other sets. So we've got that on Allen's, which we haven't got here. So if we have a snag. 
there. Uh, it's the old, co we continue to strive to improve our products and all that malarkey. So the capacitor there is correct, capacitor there, capacitor across there, the wire link across there. There shouldn't be a diode across there, but it's probably supposed to be on the other side of the board. The whole point is, if it worked right, somebody might have done that for a reason. We've got this extra capacitor, which we haven't got on this set. But again, if it uh, works properly, then that will be fair enough. So that's the only one and the diode that is kind of unexpected. Good. So that capacitor isn't fitted, so we will power this up. You know what, this doesn't look messed with. It's uh, with, Apart from that we've got a missing... I'm going to have to go back on our original photo one of these from 1982 and see whether there's supposed to be a ferrite in there. I've powered this setup recently, so I don't have any problems in putting it on 13.8 volts straight away, just like that. Um, I think it's a Cybernet standard mic, and because of that we will use the Cybernet standard mic. Wherever I've hidden it. So notice it's the same type of mic as you got with a, um, a Mustang or a um, Harvard base station. Or one of the many, I think the Hong Kong Genuine Amstrad. Right. Where's our mic? here. Right, we'll plug the test gear in. Start filling this in. These have serial numbers, I don't think they do. And just so we don't muddle it up, just put the chappies' names on, on there. Yes, yeah, so it's a working set for a tune up by the looks of it. I've never changed any capacitors in one of these. Let's power it up. Got they got a green display. It's a slightly green backlight, which is a lamp. It's not a. It's not an LED. So let's put picture in picture, and we'll have a look at where we are with transmit. So we'll start off on the uh, three watt range, and banging straight across beyond that. So we'll go to the thirty watt range of the test set. It's a shame this test set doesn't have a 5 watt range and then a 30 watt range. Um, obviously it's aimed at business radios for the UK and business radios normally the maximum power is going to be 25 watts which is why it's a 30 watt capability. If it was for America they have 45 watt business radios which they would. Right, it is 3.5 watts on channel um, 20. It is... 3.2 watts on channel 1 sorry and it's 3.8 so it's not as balanced as I would like I'll go back to channel 20 970 milliamps I wouldn't expect 
that for three and a half on this kind of set. It's a little higher than I'd expect. It's about 100 milliamps higher than I'd expect. High low power, switch at the back. And it is 250 milliwatts right now. Deviation for what it's worth on this test set if it's in a good mood. Wallow, he says 3.5. Well, if this says 3.5, it's probably a bit more than that. We won't be doing the VCO. We will be looking at the frequency. The test set has only been on 15 minutes. So I'll set it now, but I'll come back to it later. But it might not show me coming back to it. So I'll just go over to the frequency counter. Twenty seven seven nine oh nine one. So it's not stupidly out. Twenty seven seven nine oh nine one. So we'll bring that up to one two five if it'll go. If I can find the trip. Oh it's a nice quality one here. That's how it goes. So it's starting to drop now that it's 40 years old. You know, it really doesn't matter. It's, it's as near as damn it. And as this test set warms up, it will read higher. So by the time I've done, it may be a bit more. So we've got that at the maximum it'll do. We only need to start worrying when they are under 79076, somewhere around there. And they don't become illegal until they're even lower than that. But it becomes noticeable after 79076. So we'll put that into the signal generator, 2779. We will. One, one, three. So we're being good. And we'll get a speaker plugged into it. So just make sure. Yep. That's point three of a microvolt, so you know, excellent. Go to the cyanide meter. And we'll unplug that speaker. We'll just put this bottom back on. Right. And as I was doing, plugging in the cyanide meter instead. good this is 0 0.36 0 0.31 and if it will do 20 yeah it will 0 0.85 as well let's go back to a speaker we can hear well you can't hear the other one I can let's put squelch squelch to full let's put the secondary camera on the attenuator so we're at one microvolt three ten thirty it's coming in at thirty so let's get an exact reading yes it is thirty so full squelch is thirty microvolts I'd like it to be stronger than that I'd like it to be a hundred but there's no hard and fast rule I wonder what the specification says it's supposed to be because I just ran off the 
instruction books uh, specification page. Well, it does that. And it doesn't quite do... Oh, yes, it does. It does both those. Uh, it tells you um, tight squelch in DB. Um, I haven't got my conversion chart, so um, there you go. Threshold. Dirty squelch control. We'll have to take the top board out to get to that. And then it's a sealed type, so it's quite difficult to get the stuff in. But there's threshold. It's, three, it's 0 0.3. Meter. It's got 100 microvolts on. And if I put about four pairs of glasses on... It is showing what it's ten. It's showing S nine for twenty five microvolts, so that's being very generous. Mink lamps okay, switches are okay. Dirty squelch. Yes, not applicable. A non transmit. Let's just uh, see what the meter does. So that needs to come down. Right, so I've got to try and remember what's transmitted and what is received on these. I've got some helping uh, things here, like the squirky diagram. So this is from Binatone. So we can see the transmit lineup is going to be uh, well 102, 104, 105, 106, 7, 8. So it's going up that line. 8, 9. to be what we're doing. Here goes. Let's put that back onto the main meter. See if we can balance this a bit better and get a little bit more out of it. Now balanced. That feels like it already was. That's not having any effect, so is it this one? Let's just look at Allen's again. So I've got still got a humming EM27 to look at. 
Bzzz, one of those. That'll be after this. Why can't I find it? Well, here's another one which uh, isn't the Allen one. And that's not got anything in filter one position, so that uh, clinches it. Oh, it does make a difference, it is that one. Why the tool for that? Centralised. We're like four point at uh, three point nine five at the moment. I think that's where we're going to be, to be honest. This filter isn't gonna make it do more watts, I'm sure. What I need is the blue tool. Right, so let's have a look at the other channels. Channel 40, three and a half watts. Channel one, 4.1 watts. So let's balance that a bit. Let's go channel 40, because it hasn't worked out on its own, has it? So let's just see which one is uh, affecting it. Right, let's look back at the other channels. 4.05. 4 on the dot. Three point six. That's how it is. Current consumption is now 1.08. And low power has now become 200 milliamps, which we can adjust. So we'll do that adjustment right now. And low power this one here and it, the maximum it will do is 225 milliamps uh, milliwatts right what did it show on the meter Why isn't that having any effect? Have I on the wrong preset?
and we'll see whether we've uh, got anything to tell you or whether the Marconi one is playing ball today and behaving itself. Right, here goes. Wallow. Absolutely spot on. So deviation is that one there. But we're not going to touch it because it's spot on. So I'll see you in a bit when I've done another church service. Right, so church service later, we're back onto this set. So the, where we've got it, we've done the deviation. We just couldn't adjust the RF meter. I've done a black and white photo like I do. I started filling in the coloured bits. So we know that we've got the RF meter, we know we've got the receive meter, we know we've got the deviation. And we don't know what the other two are, but one's low power. Was it that one uh, over there was low power? Did it? I think I set that, didn't I? Check back with my notes. So low power, can fill that one in, we did that. That's that one. So I think I was twiddling the wrong one to be honest. Because that one is RF meter. Right, let's try again. That's having an effect. Yes, it helps when you do the right one, doesn't it? And there we are. No problem at all. Set it for four. Right. So deviation, S meter, um, RF meter, low power. So that's going to be squelch, isn't it? The one I thought was that. Was that. So... Tell you what, now two hours have elapsed, and we'll see how on frequency this is. Look at that, spot on. So, we're not going to adjust it, so it's slightly high seven, nine, one, three, one. Right, so we'll do the receive now. So with 100 microvolts, an S9 equivalent signal, we'll plug in the cyanide meter and all that malarkey into our attenuated speaker, which you're unlikely to hear. And we'll now make sure that that's maximum recovered audio. I think that's the detector. 
No, I think. Ah, this is. I don't know. It could be that one. It is. It is that one. So I'm lying already. That's two lies I've told you. Right, we'll go through the front end now. And I'll just make sure I'm doing these in a sensible order. So back to the proto done that wrong as well T1, T2, T3, T4. Check again. T1, 2, 3, 4, where's 5? T5's that one. So it's T1, T2, T3, T4, and T5. Rx order, T1, 2, 3, 4, 5, detector. is T6. Just double check that. Yeah. There we go. Right, having got that sorted out, let's turn down the signal. To about 4 dB so we can actually see the difference. So I don't think that's made any difference. There's a tiny, tiny little difference on that one. It's quite a difference on that one. There we go. Let's get a new reading. Not point three eight. Oh, I was there before. Not point three two. Zero point eight five. It's the same. Right, let's deal with this squelch. I'll put the speaker back in that we can hear. So it's amazing how that, you know, just slightly altering the detector, it makes the set less sensitive. But then it brought it in more sensitive. One of the IFs being out. It's 
So um, it's six and one half dozen the other, but at least it won't be garbled. And that detector was very, very slightly out, and that may have made it slightly distorted on receive. Right, um, I've done deviation. It was 2.2 to 2.5. We didn't have to adjust that at all. We've done that. We want to do the squelch. So I'm going to turn the squelch to full. And that's 10 microvolts. So I'll just put the attenuator on so we can see that. See whether we can adjust it. So we've now come to the conclusion that's going to be squelch, and it is. That's exactly where I want it to be. 100 microvolts. There we go. You know, I've done. It's taken me forty years to do these photos. So we're not going to do the VCO. We'd have to work a method out. Uh, I do have that one of uh, that uh, Mr. Benefactor Allen sent in. Um, whether or not it is repairable is another matter. I've certainly had a look at it and uh, not got anywhere with the VCO in 90 minutes so uh, we'll see but at least it's proved useful um, in proving whether this had the missing parts or not and having the other scrap set did show that we've got uh, that should be missing so that's good 2SC2078 is the output transistor so I think we're all done we've got the S meter to set with 100 microvolts on the test set so an s9 equivalent we need to adjust the s meter for s9 and then we're done if i can see it it's quite low it's really low down where the s meter nine is it's as low as it goes you've got nine then ten so i've still not got it quite at nine so our s9 instead of being 100 microvolts is 76 microvolts so it's a bit generous not that you're going to take much notice just check the squelch threshold. So, take picture in picture off now. Set the squelch threshold. We need to clean that still. That's just not quite in at point three. It's now what? Oh, it's 0 0.6, 0 0.66. That's great. So I just want to get to the bottom of... What was it? Oh, yeah, cleaning the uh, squelch. I'm going to be very careful with this being a customer set. I'm going to turn the power off and unplug the mic. I think we've got to take the front off and they are sealed type. In the batch of uh, fronts I bought about 15 years ago, where we got the JCB867 for Allen front from, is a falcon front and you think ah oh, it's such a shame because I really like these sets
Oh, well, at least it comes off. And I think we've got a, an access hole. So I'll just work that around with the power off. As a courtesy, I'll just go and clean the front for the customer. One thing to be aware of is once you take this off, the meter mechanism is exposed because the case for the meter is left behind on the front panel. So that makes that in a very vulnerable position. So I'm going to do the on-the-air test and I'm not going to screw the case on, uh, not the bottom on, because I want to go over this with isopropyl alcohol. Because that takes time to dry, if I did that, we wouldn't be able to do the on-the-air test and we're going to run out of time. So uh, when we, once we do the on-the-air test, this can then dry overnight and we'll get on with tomorrow's, which is either the EM27, uh, which we've got, which has got meh, and isn't the capacitors, and isn't the battery, and isn't, yeah. Um, I think it's decoupling problem. I think they're all the same. Are these knobs all the same? No, that one's not got a, a pointer on it. Right, power back on. Making sure the meter still works after doing that to it. Right, we'll put the mic in. Oh, I'll, I'll tell you what we will do. We'll just test his mic first. I think that's got a dirty switch on receive. Testing one two, testing one two, one two, one two. So I don't want to do mic repairs. So again, we'll take the power off because I'm going to need to exercise this switch. The only, um, this is the only switch cleaner we recommend, which is the service hole one. Some of these have got, there are some types which have got carbon tetrachloride in, which although is an excellent cleaner, unfortunately melts plastics. At the end of the day, this is 40 years old. Well, like the rest of the radio, but I mean, a mic's a bit of a weak link.
Good. Let's see what happens now. I have to get Mr. Chippy to dismantle the switch in there um, because it's a shame to throw it away when it's the factory original mic. So that'll be a job for Mr. Chippy. We'll do the on-the-air test. It won't affect the transmit, but it, the receiver's not going through uh, because of that switch. So although I've cleaned it, it's, it's not made it any better. And, and there we go. Our standard mic. Smooth volume, smooth squelch, so that's worked out. So we'll put the top lid on and hope the speaker works. To get a little bit smaller speaker, more in line with the size you'd get these days. Once again, I'm going to do the polarity, but there's no need to. It's only when you're doing stereo you need to worry about polarity. I would think the black one's going to be the negative, but I'd be wrong. Oh, I didn't look at the meter, did I? I thought it was on continuity. No, black's not showing continuity. Do you know it's the brown? No, you wouldn't expect that. You know. So brown's negative and black's positive. That's clever, isn't it? where the solder is oh let me the soldering iron's not on So there we go, brown's negative. And black's positive. Just cut that little loop off the end. Even the speaker says made in Japan on this. So basically it just did need a service didn't it it was slightly off frequency and uh, receiver was spot on really it just brought the detector up and uh, got a bit more out of the transmitter it balanced it a bit better but it's not as balanced as most so we'll just put that on loose and we'll take the test gear off Plug in the roof aerial. And when Mr. Chippy gets back from the on-the-air test, he can do the microphone repair. There we go.
One on a Roger. We don't. We don't even have a mobile phone. Usual off frequency, no doubt at Nottingham, no doubt on a naughty radio. There we go. Falcon FCB 1281 from 1981. Thanks for watching.